everybody. Well, I'm very happy to see you. And while we are waiting for other people to join us, you can enjoy listening to these relaxing jazz standards. And let's check how you can hear me. If you can hear me, please write yes in the chat box. Okay, let's wait. If you can hear me well, please write yes or send a plus icon in our chat box. And we will begin very soon. If you can see me well please write yes as well and let me explain why i'm speaking english so as long as our webinar is devoted uh, to the ielts exam uh, the ielts exam presupposes uh, that you will use english only excluding mother tongue at all that is why i think that it is more useful to speak English so that you could get used to this idea that you have to find understand everything in English and in case you do not you should find some compensation uh, things in order to understand what you need to get the idea of what you need to know okay I'm waiting for your yes or pluses in the chat box and as soon as I see them, we will begin because for the time being, I do not understand whether you can hear me or see me well. Okay, people are coming. All right, while we are waiting for others, so let's do the following thing to warm up. So I suggest that you should look at the first slide. Okay. Right. I suggest that you look at the first slide and there are three idioms on the screen. I would like you to write the meaning of these idioms. If you know, I wonder if you know these idioms or not. These idioms are widely spoken all over the English speaking world. So they are quite, from, they are quite frequently used. So to warm up, before we start talking about the aisle structure and basics, so let's just wreck our brains a little bit. Maybe you know these idioms, then you're welcome to write their meaning uh, in the, our chat box. So the first one is to face the music, the second one to be over the moon, and the third one to be on the same page. All right. So, I do not see any pluses and I do not see yes words in the chat box. Well, is everything all right? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Or just you can send thumbs up like this in the chat box. Can you do that for me, please?
All right. So, Okay, if you look at the first idiom to face the music, I can use it in the following situation. Um, so, I failed my exam or I failed our project. Now I have to face the music. So what do you think this idiom means? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So this idiom means to be able to listen to the critical things, uh, to face the critics because you did something wrong and you have to be able to listen to it and to accept it. To be over the moon if I say I am over the moon uh, because tomorrow I am going to Thailand, what do you think it means? Yep, that's right. Thank you so much. To be very happy, to be extremely happy. And look at the third one, to be on the same page. For instance, well, hello. I think we are on the same page and we can do that together. We understand each other well. We are on the same page. And actually, I have already voiced the meaning. Yep. Okay. So, have a look. So, it means number one, to accept criticism, number two, to be incredibly happy, and number three, to think the same way. Wonderful. So, let's carry on. Um, okay. So, I, in order to, before I start talking about IELTS basics, I would like uh, to introduce myself to you. I want you to trust me and that is why I'm going to share my professional background with you. Uh, because you need to know who are you teaching, who are you talking to, who is going to work with you. So, I graduated from the Chelyabinsk State Pedagogical University, the Faculty of Foreign Languages, in 2001 as a teacher of English and German as a foreign language. And uh, uh, straight afterwards, I decided that I needed to master my language skills and I um, went to London uh, in 2002. I, uh, had a student visa um, where I spent fantastic, although not easy, uh, six months. I attend in the morning. I attended language school in Oxford Street, and throughout the day and in the evening, I worked in different places, waitressing or working in some other places, but all in a restaurant uh, um, venues. And I practiced my English and that visit broadened my world outlook a lot. I met a lot of people who came to the United Kingdom from all over the world and that also changed me a lot. On my coming back, I got involved in early language education, in early language education because I was really stuck by the fact while being in London that kids can uh, learn two languages or even three languages from the very birth and they can do it really well because of this pl a brain plasticity and this ability. And so I made a research and I defended my dissertation uh, devoted to early childhood acquisition in 2010. And this is my first um, educational product. 
uh, which consisted of a lot of lessons, workouts, a CD, DVD, and uh, a lot of other useful uh, stuff. And after, at the same time, and so I was into language education since early childhood. At the same time, I worked as a interpreter uh, for the jazz and the pipe organ held in our city in Chelyabinsk each autumn. And this is the second part of my life. Music is the second part of my life. And uh, interpreting helped me to develop my language skills and interpreting skills. Uh, in 2013, I applied for a Fulbright scholarship and uh, mm, coming through uh, a rigid um, competition, I was chosen together with other 15 scholars from all over the country. And uh, as a visiting scholar, I went to the o Ohio State University in Columbus, where I spent fabulous five and fabulous and unforgettable five months, where again, I studied postdoc courses such as bilingual education, second language education, and English as an international language. And there I was fortunate to work as a teacher in the Forest Elementary School. I worked with uh, bilingual kids, with kids who came to the United States of America from Mexico, from Egypt, from other Western European and not only from Ch Asian countries. And I'm very grateful for this to dear Mrs. Perth for giving me this opportunity. Okay, will you please uh, send a thumbs up or write yes if you understand and if you can hear me well and that everything is all right. Please, I need to know that. And actually, this is my first stream and I feel a little bit nervous. And hopefully, everything works fine for now. Okay. And, uh, while having that experience in Forest Elementary School, uh, I worked with a group of bilingual kids, uh, ESL kids, who were learning English as a second language. And from that very experience, that very work changed my attitude to the teaching profession and the world. So, because I did realize that teaching English is really important and it can be really mm, meaningful, vitally meaningful for a lot of people. Right, on my coming back, I participate, started participating as a speaker at the International Conference of the National Association of Teachers of English from 2014 to 2017. And by the way, tomorrow, I'm going to present at this conference again. So wish me to break a leg because, so that's a really honorable event. All right. In 2018, I was lucky enough uh, to be invited as a teacher of English and to work for Anyang Institute of Technology in the Hunan province, central China. And that was a life-changing event. And that was mm, because Asia uh, had always uh, seemed very far. And I always wanted to go there. And when I got this opportunity, I grabbed it and I followed my heart. And while being there, I taught would-be uh, flight hostesses English and would-be civil pilots English. That was not an easy thing because there were a lot of them in the class. There were around from 30 to 50 students in one at the same time. Not five, not six, a lot more. And at that very period of my life, so I 
was asked, Chinese students started asking me to teach them academic IELTS exam. And I was really surprised because I didn't know that uh, the academic IELTS was in such a demand in China. And I started teaching them IELTS, how to prepare for IELTS. Um, and uh, since that time, I've been preparing students for the IELTS exam. So I myself uh, took it three times, passed it three times. But before that, so this is my Fulbright certificate of completion. And on the right, you can see um, the screenshot taken from the Ohio State University website, and they have uh, their alumni displayed on their websites. And uh, so I am really delighted to see my name there. So that's awesome. And so this is my IELTS certificate on the left, and this is my Cambridge English exams, Certificate of Advanced English on the right. I also um, passed TOEFL exam, and in 2019, uh, I in 2019 I participated in the IELTS teacher training workshop. So now I'm going to demonstrate my teaching skills to you. Okay, so. If you have any questions, you're welcome to write them in our chat box. And after our webinar, I'm, I will answer all of them. Okay, and let's carry on. If there are no questions, let's continue. So, I know that some of you have already taken the IELTS exam. Could you please write a plus, send me a plus, if you have taken the IELTS exam, academic or general? So this is really important because I need to know uh, what, um, what people I'm talking to, what, whether you know anything about it or not. All right, so as you see from this diagram, so the IELTS exam consists of two types. There are two forms of the IELTS exam, academic IELTS and general IELTS. If we speak about academic, so it is for people who want to study either at college, bachelor, either to, for um, getting bachelor's degree or any other degree, master or PhD or postdoc, or if you want to work in a big company, so then you need the academic IELTS. If you want to immigrate, and um, then you need general IELTS. Uh, if you need to work, but not in, important, big, not in big companies, so then probably you will not need academic IELTS, probably for immigration purposes only, general IELTS will be enough. So, academic and general IELTS have two parts which are identical. So, in the middle of our slide you can see listening and speaking. So. You have the same listening and speaking parts, which cannot be said about reading and writing. They are quite different. In the academic IELTS, reading will consist of three parts, actually, as well as in general IELTS. But academic reading uh, has more complicated texts, professionally or um, area-oriented, and they will be exuberant with terminology, with some biological terms, uh, physics terms, maths terms, and etc. If we speak about writing, in general IELTS, in task one, you will have to write an inquiry or a request. In the academic IELTS, 
you are supposed to comment and to analyze a lot of different graphs, diagrams, tables, and so on and so forth. And task two in both academic and general IELTS is an essay where you have to answer the question and there are different types of an essay and we will talk about it a little bit later. Next thing which is really important, this is the type, the format of IELTS, paper-based or computer-developed or delivered, or it is also called computer-based. Um, if you ask me which one to pick, which one to choose, personally, I would prefer computer-delivered IELTS, computer-delivered format, because of one thing. Um, in the writing section, you have the opportunity and even possibility to delete what you have already written, what you have already typed. In the paper-based format, you have to use the eraser to rub everything off. And if you do that several times, the paper may get dirty, gray, which doesn't look really nice. And it does take time to write it once again. So I would choose computer delivered uh, exam, but I know that not all authorized centers can offer you computer delivered IELTS. So that is why you have to um, ask at the specific uh, exam center uh, what format they have, paper based or de computer delivered. And you know that nowadays uh, we can take the IELTS exam in Kazakhstan, Belarus, uh, Armenia, Turkey, and other Western European countries. Okay, let's carry on. Let's speak about timing and the order of parts. So, in the IELTS exam, you will have four parts. Listening, uh, which consists 30 minutes uh, in, the acad in the computer delivered mode, and 30 minutes plus 10 minutes to transfer your answers in the paper-based format. Then reading, 60 minutes for both formats, for both modes. Uh, but remember that again, you should spend uh, 15 minutes uh, for the first text, 20 minutes for the second one, and 20 minutes for the third one, and the rest time uh, should be spent on checking and transferring answers. Writing, usually writing takes 60 minutes and you should bear in mind that you should spend 20 minutes on the first task and the rest 40 minutes on the second one, essay. And speaking, no more than 14, maximum 15 minutes. It consists of three parts and it's the same um, in both academic and general modes. All right, let's move on. Uh, I know that a lot of people are interested in how their points are transferred to those bands uh, that IELTS uh, offers. So IELTS has nine bands, right? And we are all uh, interested in getting band five, six, seven, eight, and of course that would be awesome to get band nine. So let's go back to the previous slide. The overall band score is the average of the four section scores. We have four sections, listening, reading, writing, and speaking. And this average rounded to the nearest whole or half band. Let's take the example of a test taker A. So if you have 6.5 for listening, 6.5 for reading, 5.0 for writing and 7 for speaking, then your average will be 6.25. According to the mathematical uh, rules, algorithms, it will be rounded to 6.5. And so your final band will be band 6.5, not 6, but 6.5. And so 
If the average of the four sections ends in 0.25, the overall band score is rounded up to the next half band in favor of a test taker, which is pretty good, isn't it? Okay, for the time being, do you have any questions? Is everything all right? Do you understand all what I'm saying? It, can you hear me well? Again, the same question. I'm just checking the quality of the sound. Okay, let's move on. And as I have already shown, uh, the IELTS scale consists of five band bands and we are all interested in band six, seven, and eight, of course. Um, band six shows that you are a competent user. But I know that some universities or some colleges, they require, they may accept your band eight, but usually they um, ask for band 6.5 or seven. So that's why band six is okay, but 6.5 is even better. So competent user for band six, seven, good user, and you can read the description, right? So very good user, it's band eight, of course. And uh, if you read the description, you will see if for band six, you have an effective command of the language, then in band seven, the test taker has operational command of the language. And then for band eight, fully operational command of the language. And if you read these descriptions up to the end, you will see that they differ from each other in these details. Okay, let's have a look at section band scores. You may ask me, how should I know what band will I get if I answered 30 uh, questions in the listening sections? Okay, here it is. If you have answered 30 questions, that will be band 7. 35, band 8. Now let's move on to the academic reading. Academic reading also has this transfer between points and uh, band score. So one answer is one point. So overall, if you have 35 correct answers, then this is band 8. Uh, regarding general, general uh, IELTS, you need to get 38 correct answers in order to get band 8, 34 correct answers in order to get band 7, because academic reading is more complicated than general reading. So that's why the stakes are really high. Okay, let's move on. One of their mistakes, which uh, students or which uh, test takers do not into account, is that they don't go over the descriptors, band descriptors, while preparing for the exam. If uh, listening and academic reading uh, can be yes, evaluated uh, via transferring your points to the band score, then in the writing task and in the speaking task. So the system is a little bit different. Here you will be evaluated or assessed um, following these four criteria, task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. And uh, each criterion has descriptors. And let's compare band six in the task achievement to other bands seven and eight. So if in band six, in writing task one, uh, you should present an overview with information appropriately selected. Then in band seven, if you want this band in task achievement, what does it mean task achievement? Task achievement means that you have answered all the questions in the task, that you have found all necessary trends um, and 
you have uh, commented upon all of them. I'm sorry, excuse, my nose is running. I have caught a cold recently. So now have a look at band seven of the task achievement criterion. A test taker presents a clear overview of main trends. It's not just an overview with information appropriately selected. It's, there is a word clear overview. And if we go further to band eight, a test taker covers all requirements of the task sufficiently. So if we move on to writing task two, the same. We have four criteria, we have descriptors, and if you look at the grammatical range and accuracy criterion, so you will also notice uh, these different things. For example, for band five, regarding grammatical range and how accurately, appropriately you use your grammar uh, structures. Band five uses only a limited range of structures. Band six uses a mix of simple and complex sentence forms. Band seven uses a variety of complex structures. Variety, we have a new word here. And in band eight, uses a wide range of structures. And of course, band nine, so exceptional, uses a wide range of structures with full flexibility and accuracy. So before taking the exam, please study these descriptors in order no, to know what to expect. Speaking also has descriptors and criteria. The criteria are as follows, fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. And you also can go over them before taking the exam or while preparing for the exam. So what is expected from you in this exam? The first thing, which is uh, a highlight, I'm sorry, of the whole exam, um, it is relevant and topical for both reading section and listening section and speaking section. It's contextual guess. A lot of complicated vocabulary and phenomena are explained in the text. It is not expected from you to know all the terms. You are not a prodigy. Uh, look at this uh, old text about Odonata. When I first saw this name, I was startled because I do not know, I'm not a biologist, and I do not know what creature is an Odonata is. But let's have a look at the questions. Which of the facts below are true of dragonflies, you see here, and which are true of damselflies. Okay, I do not know who, I know dragonflies, I don't know damselflies, but probably they are sisters and brothers of the same um, team, family. According to the information in the passage, on lines one to six on your answer sheet, write a, it is a fact about dragonflies only, b, it is a fact about damselflies only, and c, it is a fact about both dragonflies and damselflies. And now let's look at statement one. They have saw-like jaws, saw-like jaws. Even if you don't know the word jaws, even if you don't know the word saw-like. So if you look through the text, you will understand that odonator is the order of insects that includes dragonflies and damselflies. This is the context. We understand from the context. Go further. Dragonflies and damselflies get their name from the powerful serrated jaws. We see the word jaws and we have this word in our question statement. So like jaws. Okay, we got it. We don't know the word serrated yet. They used to tear apart their prey. We know probably tear apart. Okay, if you tear apart a thing, it means that you have really sharp teeth. Okay, the word odonata means toothed jaw. It means that it's about both of them, damselflies and dragonflies. So the answer will be C for both of them. 
So this is context, not your brilliant knowledge of the vocabulary related to the topic of biology. Next thing, what is expected from you? This is the ability to see synonyms and be able to paraphrase, because IELTS is all about paraphrasing. Uh, in order to start uh, using this uh, technique, use synonymic rows in your life, extend your vocabulary in different areas. Uh, let's continue. So this is the second passage of that curious text about Odonata. And the question is, the second statement, they hold their wings on their backs while resting. So, look at the text and please find the line about wings, about the wings, and this idea, hold their wings on their backs. Can you scan the text, not read it word for word, but scan the text and find the word wings? and find the word back. Yep, here it is. While damselflies fold their wings back, which means that the answer is about damselflies only. Okay, and now, I'm sorry, let's practice a little bit. So, you have to get used to paraphrasing as long as you are preparing for the IELTS exam which means speaking in a roundabout way. At the end of this slide, you see the sentence, this slows down her progress. I would like you to write another sentence with the same meaning in our chat box, but you have to substitute some words, keeping the meaning the same. Okay. I will wait for you to do that try. So let's see which synonyms you can find to rephrase, to paraphrase this sentence. This slows down her progress. Okay. I hope you understand what it means, right? Don't be afraid, just write something. Okay, any ideas? Okay, I'm not going to um, torment you. So that actually will look like one of the variants. Okay. This hampers her development. So slows down is the synonym to hampers. Instead of hampers, you can say um, pulls back or postpones one of these words or um, serves as an obstacle at least. Her development is the synonym for her pro progress, right? Okay, let's... Yeah, your, um, not, not actually, your progress would be better. I can see it in the chat box. Uh, your progress would be better means a little bit different. Slows down your progress, it means that your progress will not come as soon as she wants, as soon as possible. So the idea is different, that your progress uh, will come later because of some fact. So something will be an obstacle, it means prevention, some factor which is really disturbing, which stops you from progressing. Yeah, okay, let's move on. So, in order to extend your vocabulary, start reading news 15 minutes a day at least. For example, you can find any uh, news uh, uh, site, website, for example, CNN, ABC, NBS, um, and other, and start reading. It will be difficult at first, but you will get used to it. If this is really hard, then you can go to this fantastic uh, website, breakingnewsenglish.com, and uh, you can choose level there, for example. So, 
let me show you how it works. Um, okay. So just a minute. Yep. For example, if we go to this website, uh, breakingnewsenglish.com, you can go to their main page. You can pick any news you want. So on the right, there is a column with themes and you can pick up any topic you're interested in. For example, education. There is a list of articles devoted to education. Oh, let's just pick the first one. 104-year-old woman learns to read and write. And you see that this is the reading, listening, learning to read level six. Level six is quite uh, proficient. So you don't need level six if you don't need, if it's difficult, just look here. So look at the, in the middle of the page and you see level four and level five. Choose level four, oops, voila. So, and the article is shorter. And apart from reading this article, you can also practice listening. If you go click on listen to read level four, you can work with the information. So uh, there are different tasks related to reading comprehension. Uh, again, match, it's also about reading comprehension. Spelling, so it will help you to memorize and to learn the words. Then vocabulary itself and so on and so forth. So I do recommend this site for enlarging your academic and your newspaper vocabulary. Right, okay. Uh, let's carry on. Mm, sorry, just a minute. Okay. Yep. Oh, she's stoked because of this problem. Yeah, possible. Why not? Okay, just a minute. I have some technical issue. Just I'm trying to resolve it. So this is actually my first time streaming. That is why I'm still learning how to do that. And yep. Okay. Yep, I'm nearly there. Yeah, I'm here. So continue. Next thing, what is expected from you? While during the speaking section, natural flow of speech is expected from you. In order to develop this habit, you should start commenting upon everything. Uh, make yourself think in English. Write a diary or post in English. Record yourself on the voice recorder. Listen and analyze. I know that many of you don't like to listen to your voice, but believe me, you will get used to your voice really quickly if you start doing that regularly. So that is why stick to this routine, stick to this procedure, and you will notice changes going on in your speech. You might say, I don't have time for that. I am pretty busy, so I work from morning till night, but you have to prioritize. If the IELTS exam is your priority, then look at these options. You can find this time in these day, day periods, in a traffic jam, in a queue, while jogging, while walking to some place, before falling asleep, while cooking and doing household chores. You can train your brain making up stories, short stories, just commenting upon what is going on around you. Okay, just think about it. Next, so my tips. Uh, first of all, think about your weak side and uh, read the texts in that area. For example, chemistry or biology or architecture. At least watch the videos on that topic. There are a lot of interesting videos uh, related to chemistry or to space uh, exploration. Listen to podcasts. While reading, ask yourself the questions trying to analyze the article or the video. What is this text or video about? Who are the main characters? When did it happen? Where does the action take place? Why did he or she go there? Just have yourself thinking, have yourself think about these things because that's what you need uh, while doing reading sections 
who, what, why, when, with whom, and etc. Next tip, expose yourself to different accents, but stay consistent with one accent during the exam. For instance, if you start saying truck, so this is an American word, then the next word, for example, you want to say pharmacy or drugstore, you should not say a truck in one sentence of your essay, for instance, and a chemist in the next sentence, because this is a mixture of two variants, American English and British English. So that is why, please, be really accurate with the choice of the English variant. So truck, pharmacy, drugs, so these are American words, and lorry and chemist, so these are British variants. Now in number five, well, number five, participate in speaking sessions using different platforms like italki, Cambly, or others. So, so this is my overview of the IELTS exam. So, how can we, um, how can we practice it together? I would like to, I'm sorry, I would like to offer you uh, three forms of participation. So, option number one, this is a speaking club. Who is it for? If you have a month or less before the exam, if you want to enlarge your speaking vocabulary in this uh, period which is left before the exam, if you want to develop argumentation skills, and then this variant, this option is for you. So, it includes group meetings, 60 minutes each, one topic discussed, sometimes maybe we can take two topics, four, from four to six people maximum, and the time Monday and Wednesday at 7 p.m. Moscow time. So if, okay, time is negotiable, of course, and we can shift it a little bit, um, we can have it a little bit later if all participants agree, and so, what are we going to cover? Vocabulary, idioms, phrasal verbs, collocations, and linking devices. We are going to use such methods as storytelling, supporting ideas, brainstorming, and expressing views, because this is what you have to demonstrate during the speaking part. These are the topics to cover during the speaking club. You can see there are 13 of them, and they correspond to the topics um, covered or being asked about uh, during the IELTS exam. And topic number 14 is a free topic, which means you can suggest your own idea, your own topic, which is not mentioned here. Okay, let's carry on. Just a minute. Next. For example, let me demonstrate you one of the techniques. So, read the idioms and guess what topic we are going to discuss. And you see these idioms, tongue-tied, chatterbox, loose tongue, to beat about the bush, interlocutor, feel the audience. I'm waiting for your answers in our chat box. What topic are we going to discuss? So give me your ideas, please. Okay. That is communication in our life. And after that, after that, um, we will, we are going to dwell upon these idioms, we will try to learn them, to extend them, and to get used to them. Or this type of a task, for example, you will have gapped sentences, and at first you have to guess what is missing. And you see, so these are the answers, and after that you have to find the matchers. So, look at the grey box and match, I totally agree with you, with the phrase from the grey box. And that will be 
you can say that again. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, and these are the answers actually. You can say that again means I totally, in, in another way we can say it, I totally agree with you. Having said that, we can say means despite this and so on and so forth. So this is all about paraphrasing and using conversational phrases in your speech. Brainstorming. We will also brainstorm different ideas and expand our thought. We'll give supporting details and prove with the examples because again, this is what you need in part three of the speaking section. Next option is IELTS speaking simulation. Who is it for? If you have less than a month before the exam, if you want to get used to the exam format and which reduces the stress, if you want to hear the feedback straight away, and this is a one-to-one -one meeting which lasts for 20, maximum 25 minutes, and you go over all the three parts of the exam, or we can pick part two and part three. And uh, schedule is discussed individually on one-to-one -one, uh, terms. And so if you want to practice, simulate the exam, then this is for you. For example, so these are the questions of part one. So the speaking focused of September-December topics in part one. For example, you can be asked about watch and the area you live in and you should give answers but not with a simple sentence and not with a too long story and we are going to discuss that as well next option option three ielts two month prep course if you have two months or more before the exam you want to know the strategies you want to become more confident then this option is for you these will be group meetings 60 meetings, 60 minutes each, from 4 to 8 people, and from Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Moscow time. And we are going to cover all parts of the exam, reading, listening, writing, and speaking. I will tell you about all the strategies and what to pay attention on. Focus on strategies, techniques, and tips. For example, in the listening part, you are going to listen to the to four recordings and the task types will be as follows or might be as follows multiple choice when you have to choose one answer out of four matching plan map or diagram labeling form note table flowchart summary completion or sentence completion and short answer questions during our two month course we will practice we will go over all of them reading a reading part has three sections 40 questions and on the right you can see different top type of the ta of tasks from multiple choice writing short answers and completing sentences notes labeling a diagram classifying ideas into categories matching headings to paragraphs true false not given task again we will go over all of them Write in task one. You will be offered different charts, diagrams, graphs, uh, process uh, diagrams, and you should be able to identify to identify what it is, what type of thing it is, what trends you can find here, and you have to be able to comment upon them. So to explain them structure and trends, useful vocabulary, helpful linking devices. All these things we will cover during our two month prep course. And this is the example of the vocabulary that you should use while describing and analyzing uh, a graph or a bar chart. Writing task two um, presupposes that you should write an essay and um, there are different types of an essay, agree and disagree, problem solution, advantages and disadvantages, solution essay, direct question essay. 
you should use you should keep um, stick to a specific structure and you should be able to find key ideas uh, we will take all the useful vocabulary and all the helpful linking devices and particularly we will speak about punctuation which is also might be an issue during the writing part and we've come up to the speaking part so speaking consists of three parts part one it's the interview part you will be asked about 8 to 12 questions and you are not supposed to give long answers but short answers are not welcome as well <laughs> you have to be able to answer in such a way that your answer sounded proficient and not too simple and at the same time not too complicated not too long the second part is about a story the talk you should be able to make stories to make up stories create stories this is all about storytelling even if you don't know what to say create a story just speak about something somehow using linking devices using your own personal experience and covering four um, points four um, questions which are asked in this part so while answering these four questions you tell your story and part three this is the continuation of part two here you are supposed to express your opinion again giving answers expressing your opinion giving details and proving it with examples that's what we are going to cover during this two month prep course well so uh, this is all what i wanted to tell you tonight and now you're welcome to ask your questions by the way all these options will be uploaded to our group mm, on telegram channel and um, as soon as you make up your mind just contact me personally on telegram and um, i will make up groups and as soon as the groups are ready as soon as the groups are mm, formed so we will start having group or individual lessons if it's an individual one-to-one -one lesson exam simulation then we can start straight away okay i hope that the information that i presented today was valuable and helpful useful it will be useful and if you have any questions you're free to ask me your questions right fill the audience okay yep the second option sounds cool oh thank you mila second options yeah so this is the exam simulation you know what i noticed while preparing for ielts exam while preparing for IELTS myself um, mm, that the more i practice uh the less the more uh, flexible I became uh, the more I practice the more flexible I become the less afraid I become and I start uh, taking this um, process of speaking out as a normal thing I got used to it and whenever I talk to a person who uh, performed uh, the part of an examiner I was not afraid of him I just let my speech flow and uh, actually that was the most important thing the more you practice the more perfect you become all right so your questions i'm waiting for your questions i will be happy to answer your questions no more questions so very well then i wish you good evening or good morning or whatever part of the day it is and uh, hopefully 
I will meet you soon and then goodbye for now. Bye bye. Yeah, let me remind you that our Telegram channel is IELTS with Anna on Telegram. Okay, goodbye everybody.